Hey, what's the deal, you two bitch, your girl, miss? Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with a Real Housewives of Potomac review. Um, this is season four, episode 15. Came and we get along. I... Anyway, um, welcome back to the channel, everyone. All of my old and new subscribers. Um, I would love it if you are new to my channel and and have not subscribed if you would go ahead and hit that subscription bell as well as the notification bell next to it. While you're at it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button because that's like saying, hey, Miss Honey, okay? And let's banter down below. Let's talk about it. You guys, I have a goal to get this video done in under 15 minutes. I personally feel like I can do it since this episode was basically garbage. Let's do it. Giselle um, is with her girls. Basically, they're not impressed. They're not impressed with her. They're not impressed with her antics. They're not impressed with her goofiness, um, courtiness, uh, none of that. The girls are not impressed. Then we see Monique. She's at yet another doctor's appointment. Um, and she's taking one of the girls. This is, this is, everything is surrounding her being pregnant and the steps she's got, I, she does get a brief opportunity to talk with Karen, who is the person that, that has been <laughs> picked the short straw to go with her on yet an <laughs> another appointment. Basically, Karen has gone from the grave to um, Monique's appointments to <laughs> see Macy Gray back to Monique's appointments, yada, yada, yada. She does get the chance to talk to Karen about the fact that Giselle just came out the box on her just like at Robin's open house and how it was just so uncalled for and how she's just completely over it. Then um, we see all of the ladies are gathering to get on the plane because right after the open house, Robin let all the ladies know that um, she had planned a trip for everyone to go to the Cayman Islands. <clears throat> Everybody was super excited. And although Robin said that she was super duper pissed at the fact that Giselle, the other head on the green, two-headed green-eyed monster that is the... <laughs> the green-eyed monster, okay. Um, although she was still pissed at Giselle for the way she came in there, she wasn't going to say anything to her. She was instead going to wait for Giselle to slip fall, bump her head, go into a coma, get amnesia, and forget the fact that she is a selfless, selfish wench and don't give a F, okay, and just apologizes. It's not going to happen. That's what I'm saying, Robin. It's so passive aggressive. Why wouldn't you just go to her and say, girl, what the duck? What the duck? You don't come in here like that. You don't handle this like that, you know, because, um, Giselle didn't have no problem shutting the girls down at her father's birthday party. She was like, oh, we're not doing this here. Okay. That is this the main reason why Rob and Juan do not let you have keys to the safe anymore. This is why you, you get a guest code. Okay. Because you can't be trusted with the family jewels. You just cannot. You don't have the backbone for it. Anyway, so all the girls gathering at the airport, everybody there but Robin. Here's the thing. The one person that is always late, always running behind, is the person that nobody would ever miss. Like I said before, Robin is like a fart in the wind. She's like the softest little baby poop. Even that dumb tagline she has, the shorter my hair gets, the shorter my patience. Robin, good night. Were you even at the at this season? I mean, what happened? I just no one missed her really. Those girls went right on about their business. This is her whole trip. She was so far behind the plane left her. And then she didn't get there. I don't believe she got there until the very end of the night. After the girls had fought, gone to the beach, had dinner, fought again. <laughs> oh, so, so, so ridiculous. So when they get there, they FaceTime Robin. 
and Robin being passive aggressive and also of course working with Ashley um and production to help Robin you know pull this whole shading Giselle situation out um and lead up to what is supposed to be this big confrontation it's 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 all a setup Robin not being there Robin missing that plane like I just, I don't believe it for one second. I just don't believe it. Even though Robin is always late, but for you to have um, given Ashley um, half of the presidential suite, which normally would be Giselle, because again, they one body, two heads of the green-eyed monster. Giselle is the normally the one that shares a room with Robin, okay? Especially if one of them playing the trip. They're going to get the nicest suite and they're going to share it together, right? Okay, well, she done put Ashley in the suite with her. And Giselle is right there listening the whole time. I was like, production put uh, Robin up to this. She don't have the backbone. Robin don't have the backbone to pull this out. She just don't. She just don't. She don't have it with Juan. She don't have it with her kids. She don't have it with Giselle. She may, may possibly have it with Ashley or one of the other girls, but she ain't got it with Giselle. That's for sure. So I think she was assisted with this whole situation. Nonetheless, it is a tasty, tasty treat <laughs> to see Giselle's face just like, uh, uh, uh. Oh, yes, you're molded. You're cracking. What? Uh. <laughs> and she put Ashley in charge of doling out the other rooms. Of course, Ashley now, I don't know if she put her in charge of reading like the room roster or if she put her in charge of giving them the room. But Ashley give Giselle and Karen a room together. Oh, immediately things went south. <laughs> immediately. Because... um. Karen was like, well, I don't know if I want to share a room with you and Rob. And uh, Giselle was like, what you mean you don't want to share a room with me? Like, like this would be the second person that's, that's, that is hinting that they do not want to be in the same room with me. I cannot have this. Now, come on, Karen. We, we, you know, I mean, and Karen was like, well, no, I heard you was talking about me. Apparently, she was talking about when they was in New Orleans and she didn't want to go to the club with them. And she was in, Karen was on live. She said she was telling her, you know, thanking people for their condolences. And Giselle felt like she just didn't want to go. I don't understand why we talking about this. Like, I just don't get it. Why are we discussing this? So somebody didn't want to go out. You still had a good time. I don't get it. If she want to sit at home and be on the live, let her be on live. I just don't. What they got to do with your good time? What they got to do with you partying? What they got to do with the fact that you ain't got no man in your bed and Karen do? Now, he may be mostly dust. <laughs> dry skin and <laughs> and stretched out ligaments but still he hugs okay and you ain't got nobody i don't know why you worried about what what a married woman is doing back in her room but okay so Karen was like, I heard you was talking about me and woo the woo the woo. And then it just went from one thing to the other. Now they in the lobby. They in the lobby. And Candace, who is the squeakiest wheel. <laughs> she is eternally the squeakiest wheel. This whole season she has done nothing but squeak and squeak and squawk and squawk and squawk. And I was like, if y'all don't put some anointing oil down her throat so we can stop all this squeaking and squawking. She's the she's the voice of reason. You ladies, calm down. I believe Karen was really mad though, cause that the way Karen's head was moving, she and Giselle done walked off and came back and walked off. She want to talk to somebody about getting a different room, getting a different room. That is not true. That is not true. And Karen was like, I don't appreciate yada yada yada. And Candace was like, calm down, girls, calm down. You're too old for this. Okay, they should have turned and started windmilling you about this because you too old to be in your own house and can't get nobody to leave. You too old not to be able to control your own emotions. You too old to have a butter knife. A butter knife. Okay, you brought a butter knife, okay, to a Mickey Freaky gunfight. I don't think you should be the one talking about people's ages and behaviors. Okay? Okay.
All right, so, um, y'all calm down. There's white people watching. Calm down. Half your crew is, uh, your people is white. <laughs> It's always white people watching. Robin, Jazelle, <laughs> Ashley. It's always white people. Dog on Katie. It's always white people watching. Always. I don't care if it's two thirds of white people. It's always a white person watching. Okay. I don't get that. I don't get that at all. But let's move forward. So, um, they all break it up and dismantle and take it on, take it on to where they gonna go. They all go to their rooms. Now, I don't know if Giselle got a room or what happened with that situation. I think they just tried to calm it down and let's just bring it back to center and so on and so forth. And um, they go on up and see the rooms and this, that, and the third. And Katie is talking to Candace mostly. And, and Ashley keeps whispering with Giselle. And Giselle is looking at the fire going... Yeah, you know when you add fire, uh, add uh, air to fire, it fans the flames, right? Huh, huh. So she don't know, Katie. I mean, uh, Ashley don't know if I want to talk to her before dinner, after dinner, during dinner. I'm not sure. And and Giselle is like, well, just make sure you get it done. This this scene, <laughs> this the tonight. Tonight is you and Katie's fighting. Then tomorrow is me and Robin. So okay. Anyway. So they out there on the beach. Now, Katie done called Candace up to Candace's room while she getting ready and told her she coming down to her room, right? So Katie done forgot because of some of the stuff that she was doing in her room to get ready, to get her mind right. You know what I'm saying? To get her mind right, <laughs> to be with these girls, whatever that was she was doing in her room, to get her nerves together. She forgot she was supposed to go to Candace's room. So when they said, well, where's Candace? And, and they, died, they down at the beach. Uh, all the girls are down there. Candace isn't down there. I can't remember who else was in there. Y'all know Monique never went because she can't fly. You know, she 35 weeks, 36 weeks, 32 weeks, some of them weeks. I don't know. She about to drop any day now. So the only other two people that's not there is Robin and Monique. Now, Giselle is down at the, at the, at the, at the beach too. And Katie says, well, uh, Candace is back in the room. Oh, gosh, I guess I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go by there, but I, and somebody said, lied. She was like, no, not lied. I just forgot. And so, um, Ashley going to say, well, that wouldn't be unlike you. And so, K Katie was like, uh, Katie's wig was like, oh, hold up. Hold up. Excuse me? Excuse me? Who, who, what would be, what, you, I, I'm sorry, what now? Ashley go in. Katie's wig was like, oh no, oh no, everybody was talking about you. I heard you were saying things and you called me dumb and, and all of this and I don't appreciate it. I really tried to forge a friend. Katie's wig was like, pump your brace, girl. Everybody was talking about you. Everybody had something to say about your situation with Michael. And I'm sorry, but me and Katie both thought that your man was gay. <laughs> me and Katie both. Okay, was clutching our cum, our combs. Oh, that's inappropriate. <laughs> was, cl uh, was clutching our combs and our straps in the back. Okay, okay. Two straps in the back, a comb in the front, and one in the top. <laughs> we was clutching all of that. Okay, because your man act like he was coming on to, to my girl's man. You know what I'm saying? He... It, <laughs> So, Ashley just, just, of course, Katie is so kind of matter-of-fact and nonchalant-ish that, honestly, I think it just pissed Ashley off. I think she maybe wanted her to cry or something. But Katie was like, I mean, I may have called you dumb I, I, and stupid. You're both. You're dumb and you're stupid and you're ignorant. Okay, <laughs> and you're delusional. This is what her wig say, and you're delusional if you think I'm going to take it back. <laughs> and so Ashley was talking about, oh, you, that's why you're sleeping with an uh, unemployed man. He's living off of you, and, you know, you need to try to get your mind right and get him between your legs. Some old nasty retort about Katie. I was like, what Katie is 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 standing in the midst 
of not giving AF about what it is you talking about. Because she got a whole ex around here, okay, that's trying to keep her kid, keep her from her kids. That's trying to take her kids. But can you see that side? You can never see that side of anybody else. You can't ask her. You can't possibly do it. And Giselle, you are filthy. To encourage that. To encourage that. And had a nerve to have a problem with what Monique said. Monique said what she said. And, and what? And it's true. You ain't ish, Giselle. Okay, so they go on off the dinner. And everybody is talking. Giselle and Karen finally try to have some little come to Jesus moment. Some little moment of peace where they just oblige each other. I'm not going to mention this and you're not going to mention that. And we can try to work on it and get it back together and whoop the whoop the whoop. Well, Giselle promptly kicked Karen out the the friend circle by asking her, so um, who's your distributor? Who's on your distribution? I was like, what is you talking about? Why would you even bring that up? Why is we even... <sighs> Giselle, you messy and transparent. Okay, I can see right through you. Okay? All right. So, Katie, um, I don't know if somebody... I think Ashley said something. And then Katie was like, look, okay? I may have called you dumb. I may have called you stupid. Okay, but I'm just telling you that everybody around here has talked about your dude. Like, it's obvious. First of all, he's got a, a freaking pattern. Okay, he's got a pattern. <laughs> if you're in the South, it's pattern. If you're in the North, right? But he's got a pattern, right? Of this type of behavior. Everybody was talking about it. It was from my perspective. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, let's just move forward from it. So Ashley can't let it go. Dig, dig, dig. Okay, so Katie was like, I just, I don't, I just don't, I mean, I just, I literally just don't give a, a F. I don't. Like, they get up from there and leave and go sit in the lobby, right? And, and they gonna wait on Robin. You know, everybody tired, everybody been drinking, everybody been arguing. And Ashley starts again, except this time she gets in Wig's business. Why would she get in, in Katie's business is one thing. But for you to get in Wig's business, Ashley, you was really looking for it. And so when she got in Wig's business and started telling Wig about how atrocious she looked and how raggedy she looked and how she looked like she had been washed out in the toilet, okay, shook real hard and dried in a windstorm, okay, when she got the calling Wig out on her lack of edges, okay, her lack of parting space hmm wig said you know what i'm sorry i'm sorry you feel this way i'm sorry let's just squash it and move on ashley went on again wig say that's fine you know what i'm sorry i guess i call you dumb when i meant stupid oh! <laughs> everybody lost it wig cut a deep wig said take that <laughs> you witch, okay? <laughs> and Ashley was like, I, I, I. Katie was like, good night. <laughs> okay, Ashley's gonna tell Katie that she think she's not strong enough to be in the group. Oh, see, what happened was when Wig embarrassed Ashley. Ashley did what a lot of people do when they don't have a leg to stand on. When they are uh, inherently weak and all they do is pick and magnify the flaws of others to make themselves feel empowered okay she went below the belt she did she went below the belt and she said some things to katie that she knew would cut her deep she knew would cut her deep and this is why the girls should have let candace run up one side of you ashley and tap dance down the other this is why, okay? Because you don't have no boundaries. You don't have no no filter whatsoever, which is why I don't have no problem telling you that you married your daddy in the form of your husband and gave birth to them both in the form of that little baby. That little baby. 
look like your daddy's older brother, your husband, Michael. Boom, I said it. Okay, you guys. Um, finally, Robin gets there, and the ladies have a little chitter chat. And um, next week, we continue in the Caymans, you guys. That is it for for Real Housewives of Potomac. Y'all put it down below. I think Katie handled herself beautifully. And I think the way that Ashley acted at the end was proof the fact that Katie was keeping it so cool, calm, and collective and intellectual on Ashley. And Ashley could not keep up. She was steady trying to take these lowbrow digs, okay? And the stuff that she said at the end, towards the end, I was like, girl, please. Katie can handle her liquor and her drugs better than all you heifers. One, two, um, she been in the modeling industry full time. Trust me, she knows how to wrestle with the devil by the pale moonlight. One thing, she not as weak. Now, she may be coping. She may be coping. But when it come to tongue wrestling, she had you, Ashley. She had you dead to right. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. And until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah.